I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show. It is a great pleasure to welcome John Hemingway. His new book, In Full Flight, A Story of Africa and Atonement, is just a hint at the scale of work Mr. Hemingway has indulged himself these many years of being an Africa hand. He first traveled there when he was a teenager. He knows the continent extremely well. And in 1979-1980, working as a journalist and a filmmaker, he discovers a, a phenomenon called the Flying Doctors. And inside the Flying Doctors, this is of Kenya, there's one particular doctor, Dr. Dr. Anne Spurry. She is Swiss French, and at this point in her life, 20 years short of her death, she is famous for service rendered, volunteer services rendered to the people of Kenya with her small aircraft, and she flies to the out reaches of Kenya to nurse, to inoculate, to repair, to comfort. Anne Spurry, celebrated, remains celebrated. However, this is a story of another Anne Spurry, the same one, and John's going to take us not only into Africa, he's going to take us into the mysteries of our fate. John, a very good evening to you. Thank you very much. I begin with your first meeting with Dr. Anne Spurry. 1980, you arrive, and she wants to take you on an adventure in her small aircraft. Uh, be there at 8 o'clock in the morning. Here we go. What did you learn those three days you were with her? Good evening to you. Good evening to you. It's so good to be here. Thanks so much. Um, what did I learn from her? I, first of all, I didn't have a clue. I had headlines. People kept saying, you have to meet Anne Spurry. She is a character. She is somebody who really represents everything that you like, which is, um, uh, you know, somebody who has totally integrated themselves into the wild of Africa and are doing something that they, uh, they have a mission that they have created all by themselves. Her mission is to help the tribal poor. And uh, there I am in a very small piper sitting next to her, and at this point, she's been really tough on me. She barely gave me an interview. She told me that if I didn't show up at 8, she'd be out of there, and good luck to me. Of course, I was there very early. And I, when I'm in the plane, I'm trying to grasp with who she is because she's not saying a word. I can see her eyes ferreting between controls, the map, the chart, and then various landscapes, uh, you know, various uh, landmarks that she's looking for in the landscape. Beautiful country, wild, desolate. It gets drier and drier. We finally have what used to be Lake Rudolph to our west, now called Lake Turkana, you know, a site of where human beings were first formed, were first formed and, and uh, took their first steps on the way to people the world. That's below us, and here she is. Um, she has silver hair. She has sort of gray eyes. Uh, she doesn't smile very much. Lots of uh, lines on her face, and she's cut her hair very, very short, and she's wearing a bush jacket. And um, in, in today's world, you might say she's kind of butch, but uh, I never knew that word at that time, and I, I just thought that uh, she was dressed conveniently for Africa, for the bush, if you will. And, um, and so, bingo, I'm trying to work this, this story out. Uh, she does all these remarkable things. She's a true uh, caregiver. Uh, she is an altruist. And yet she's sort of churlish and tough on me. You land. The people arrive. Great celebration because they've seen her many times before. And yet her manner is bossy, demanding, aggressive, brassy, even tyrannical. Does that surprise you? Uh, it did surprise me. Uh, that's not the way you look at um, uh, caregivers. Mm -hmm. uh, she immediately said, she pointed at her Gladstone bag and said, follow. So I picked it up and I trotted after her as best I could. And all the missionaries there, they all knew her. They all knew her style. She immediately got to work. And we, we went from patient to patient to patient. Uh, and there was this, 
I'll just tell one of these stories, but there was this extremely old man who had just walked and dragged himself to the hospital. Uh, he, uh, when the when Anne asked how old he was, the nurses spread their arms to describe infinity, and he lay there on this co uh, cot. Uh, his uh, he didn't have a spare piece of flesh on him. Uh, you could see his rib cage, and you could just make out a flutter of his heart. And um, and Anne said, "Well." Are there going to be any members of his family here uh, attending him in his last hours? The nurses shook their head. And there was this moment when, thinking I wasn't watching, she reached out and put her arm, her hand on his cheek to give him some form of comfort. And then she happened to notice that I was smiling, and she immediately withdrew her hand and went into the next room. Right. Two people in there. Okay. Now, that's the Dr. Anne Sperry you meet in 1980. Uh, you go to dinner with her. She has a very straightforward manner of telling stories. One story involves the banda where you're going to spend the night and how there'd been a massacre by gangsters. And she just zip people up in body bags at the end of it. So there was that sentimental big heart that you saw accidentally. And then there was the... Brusque doesn't do it. She's, it's as if she's not human. She, she's mechanical about body bags. Yeah. Did that surprise you? Oh, yeah, totally. Um, I happen to have known the, the guy who was murdered there. Um, and um, it was, it, she told the story, and then she had this funny way. I shouldn't do it right now, but uh, when she came to the end, end and she said, there they were, uh, all of them, shot dead, bullet holes everywhere. So we zipped them up, and she slapped her hands like that, and that was it. Uh, and then she replied, I've slept in that same banda and in that same hut, and I guarantee you there are no ghosts. That was a clue, John. Wonderful clue. There are no ghosts. The yeah. person who knows ghosts. So let exactly. us begin. Uh, with Dr. Anne Shbury, whom you met in 1980. The book is in full flight. It's the story of Dr. Anne Shbury, but also the story of the 20th century, the horrors of the 20th century. John Hemingway is the author. I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show.